Hey guys, this is Downing. And today I just wanted to give a little bit of a supplemental overview of the air hockey table that I released a couple of days ago. Um, I just wanted to touch base a little bit more on the features, the play modes, some of the sounds it actually makes, and a little bit more about how it actually functions versus how it was just built. All right, so let's start out with the control leg. This is where pretty much the power for the system is turned off or on, or the power for the fans underneath off and on. Kept them separate because we've got a couple modes on here that don't really require running the fans at all times, so it was good to just be able to turn it off and on at will. Over here we've got our volume up and down buttons which control the speakers that are up in the scoreboard. And then obviously right here is the, uh, the play mode selector. So this is kind of the heart of the system and where I really wanted to have these options readily available where if you just wanted to have a good old fashioned air hockey mode or air hockey game or if you wanted to do more of the Doom themed mode which is uh, not only changes the LED configuration, the light bars and the scoreboard but it also has a unique set of sounds for when a score is actually counted. Emulation mode is something that we are working on as well still, whereas we can actually take over the screen scoreboards and play any video game we want through Emulation Station. And developer mode, we'll get into that. This was kind of just like an extra placeholder, if you will, for if we wanted to make any changes down in the future, but um, you know, Crash Bash being Crash Bash was kind enough to put in a couple, uh, a couple of bad apples, which Thank you. All right, so in regular air hockey mode, it's just basically a pretty standardized table laid out for you know what a regular uh, hockey rink would look like. And up here in the scoreboard, there's a custom background screen and um, score counter. So home and away, each one of them flash differently and make different sounds depending on where the uh, goal goes. I don't know if I can do this one-handed, but we'll see. All right, away one, perfect. And each one of these light up independently too, depending on you know which side scores. We head on over to Doom mode. And as I said before, our base changes, our light bars change, our screen decal changes, and this is one of the fun parts. If the puck doesn't fall out, good luck. <clears throat> Alright, so the Doom Slayer just uh, got a point. The Doom Slayer just died. Now, emulation mode we're still technically working on because we kind of ran into a problem with getting Emulation Station to play kindly with our custom setup we had running on the Raspberry Pi. We could get games on there, we just can't quite get them to run quite yet, but the theory has been tested and it did work with RetroPie when we had it in there, so it's just a matter of figuring that out. But the same premise goes, push the emulation mode button, and emulation station loads up, and obviously the LED table changes to whatever I have actually running in Hyperion or whatever the last thing I had set up. So the other feature that's going to tie in with the emulation mode is whenever there's a game that's actually being played up on the screen, there's going to be a composite capture setup that will take those screenshots and then bring it down here to play on the table. Since we don't have that quite working yet, I just actually have my old Super Nintendo Portable plugged in to the breakout box and the composite line is going right to the table.
Oops. And now to developer mode. Because Crash thinks he's funny. That's it. Yes, that is bad apple. Running on my air hockey table. Nice. But anyway guys, that's my table. I hope you enjoy it. It's been a project, no doubt. But, um... We'll see what comes of it in the future. Thanks, guys. Later.